one of the decisions that moved me to decide to pursue a career in healthcare was my abuela. Abuela is the name that we give in Spanish to, the, to our grandmothers. But I'm going to use the term abuela because the connection that we have with them in Latin America and the role that they had that they have in our societies is slightly different like a grandmother in the U.S. So my abuela always was there for me, for us, in the family and in their community. She was always giving herbal remedies and doing healthcare uh, actions to the people that, that, that she loved and that uh, went to her for advice. So my abuela was always a healer. I had a special connection with her. Because of that, I started to feel like I wanted to serve people and I wanted to serve communities. Welcome to A Nurse First. This is Daniel Suarez Baquero telling his own A Nurse First story. I not only had this connection with my abuela, but also with my mom. Um, actually, because my dad passed away when I was uh, really young, uh, they too made a lot of effort and they were so brave to give me everything as much as they can because I had a, a hard childhood because of the lack of resources, because we were a, a big family. Uh, and my parents and my abuela, they tried to give us everything. They were sure that we didn't lack our basic resources, like education, like a house, food, water. They were my role models in life. So I decided to pursue a career in healthcare because of that reason, because I wanted to give back to people. Becoming a nurse was Daniel's dream from a young age. But when he reached high school, he felt pressured to become a physician instead, because that career was historically seen as more prestigious and masculine. He dug in, reading and researching all the healthcare profession options available to him. I felt like if I become a a a physician, I will be just a patient's visitor, only going there for a brief moment to search and surgery procedure, make a diagnosis, and then um, see the people next day or in a month. But the nurse, the nurse is with people 24-7. The nurse is all the time with the people. So I said, like, I want to do that. I want to be with the people regardless of social um, acceptation or prestige. Because being a nurse in Latin America is different than being here in the U.S. In the U.S. is the most trusted profession. But outside the U.S., and especially in Latin America, being a nurse, you are like the assistant of the physician, or you were not enough to become a physician. But I decided with conviction to become a nurse. I only applied to nursing schools. I was so focused that I wanted to work in women's health. But I didn't knew in that moment where, when I started um, my undergraduate program, which part of the spectrum of women's health I would like to work with. And then I had my class of maternal and perinatal nursing healthcare. And in that class, that was a revelation for me. And it was because I understood why my abuela was a synonymous of the infinite because the abuela becomes that womb who has the womb of my mom inside of her. And these two wombs were inside of the womb of my great-grandmother, of my bisabuela. And it's this feminine lineage that ended with me because I'm a man. So I decided that that would be not the case and I will continue that lineage of the infinite through my nursing work. So I decided in that moment that I will make the most effort with my practice to change that kind of stories in my country of the people that were under my care because I wanted to care for and caring for them. And I thought that 
if I can change those experience of those pregnant couple people that were under my care, maybe I can change the way in which new human beings and new people are arriving to this world. And changing that beginning could be like a first step to changing the future for all of us. In maternal and healthcare, I had a wonderful experience during my undergraduate years. My mentor in my undergraduate and my master's, uh, her name is Marta Patricia Gerano Beltran. She was magnificent and she gave me a gift, the gift of being completely a nurse for the first time during my capstone project. She took me to an educational intervention about motherhood and parenthood that was close of the neighbor in which I was born in Bogota, Colombia. That touched me deeply, uh, being close to the people that were like me or were coming from, from the same place like, like myself. But when I graduated as a nurse and I started to look for jobs in hospitals, in, in labor and birth rooms, I only received rejections because Colombia is a really traditional country and is a little bit archaic in some aspects. So for that reason, being a male nurse, taking care of pregnant capable people was a no-no, especially teaching about maternity and fatherhood was only a task of women. But for me, that was like, why? That, that was like uh, shocking for me because I saw a lot of physicians doing that work as obstetrics and gynecologists. And the gender was not like a barrier. But when we talk about nursing, it was. Hearing no over and over again had to be disheartening. How did you handle the rejection? I think that courage is inside you. And there are different ways in which we can find it. For me, it was my abuela who pushed me, who, who was there for me all the time. It was hard. I felt like I would never be able to pursue my dreams. And my first job as a nurse was in an ER. It was an awful experience. <laughs> and then I was moved to other um, hospitalization services. But suddenly, after going and trying and doing and being stubborn, I had been so stubborn in my life. I was able to do it and just break those boundaries, those archaic canons that were like containing my dreams and containing my hopes and, and my ways of being. So for that reason, I decided to pursue my master's degree. And I studied a master's in maternal and perinatal nursing healthcare. My Primarily goal in that moment was to be able to work in my dream job that was helping pregnant couple people. Graduating from the master's allowed me to do that. I became the first male nurse in uh, several hospitals across my hometown, Bogota, Colombia, in the birth and uh, labor rooms. So. It was like a, a shock for my colleagues and for the institutions who were questioning why we have a, a male nurse in the birth room. But now I was the first, but I was not the, the least. During my master's, I noticed that there was a theoretical gap in Latin America. So I said, like, I need to pursue a PhD to fill this gap. And something that actually caught my attention was when I was reading the books and learning about disciplinary nursing knowledge that in Latin America, I wasn't able to look at myself in those books. Those books were filled by white, cisgender, North American or European women. So 
I said, why my professors and my mentors who have developed so much knowledge and doing different advancements in nursing discipline that are not here? And in that moment, um, I decided to pursue my PhD. And I came here to the U.S. to do that because I was told that here in the U.S. is where the disciplinary nursing, the core disciplinary nursing knowledge emerged. But when I arrived here, that was not the case. Uh, when I arrived here in the U.S. and I started to to talk about my experience as a nurse, labor and birth nurse, as a nurse midwife in Colombia for 10 years, I think so, I noticed that my perspectives of nursing were different than my colleagues or my professors. Then I started to talk about uh, this main concept that uh, in Spanish is cuidado, that it could be translated in English as care and caring. But care and caring are different words in English, and they, these two words have different uh, nonsense and meanings. But for us, that difference doesn't exist. So then I understand how the knowledge that was developed of in nursing was sent out without considering the cultural congruency, the um, translation congruency, and was just sent like in post, like this is nursing and you try to do something with that. Uh, but that, that action that we had in our disciplines in the 80s and in the 70s create a completely unique and distinctive vision of nursing in Latin America. I receive a lot of like comments of mentors and professors and reviewers of peer review journals saying that that was not important, that that was not the case, that I was wrong, that uh, I was not fundable, that um, I was just saying like nonsense. But um, then I had the support of of different professors during my PhD program, especially Dr. Jane Champion. She was the first one who believed in what I was saying. She took the time to really mentor me and hear me. Because of that, I was able to pursue my dissertation in Colombia with traditional parteras, parteras tradicionales, or maybe traditional midwives um, in my country. They care for the Rural, rural ethnic minorities in my country and urban marginalized communities. And they are like so fundamental for healthcare in my country. But at the same time, they are discriminated because they are not, they are not formally educated or because they are uh, racialized in a different way in the country. So I have this wonderful opportunity to work with them to start to, to think in more critically about for example, the meta paradigm, uh, how we see the nursing discipline in a distinct way in Spanish speaking nursing. And that helped me to connect again with my roots and again with my abuela. She was really important for me. She, she made the person who I am today. She told me to be transparent, to be authentic, to be honest, to say the truth to being caring, to being compassion, to have compassion for others, to being attentive, sensitive, intuitive. She was everything in my life. She said to me one day, dream with the stars so you can reach the heaven. So, when I am talking about the topics that move this passion inside of me, I can see these topics in the stars on my sky. Your abuela sounds like an incredibly brilliant woman. What stars are you chasing next? Will you return home to Columbia? Now I'm in the actions program at UCSF with Dr. Monica McLemore working on reproductive justice and trying to to move that needle for pregnant couple people uh, in the U.S. and in the world. When I arrived to the U.S., that was my main goal, 
I said like, I'm going to obtain my PhD and I'm going to return to my country and continue working in my country. But then I realized that I need to be here to make the nurses in Latin America to, in a certain way, be heard by the people who are here. Because even nowadays, the U.S. and Europe and the Anglo-Saxon Academy rules what nursing is and what is not. And for that reason, I'm going to stay here in the U.S. I don't know for how long, but um, I'm going to stay here as much as needed for the people in my country, for the people in Latin America. It was a really difficult decision because in Colombia I left, but sometimes in nursing, and we as a nurses, we used to do that every day, going to take care of people, going to hospitals, going to provide care to different places. So right now I'm doing the same. Wherever I go, wherever, whatever I, I write, Every time I speak, I am bringing my roots, my people, my country. I just want to highlight that if I am here, it's not just because of myself. It's because mostly women, a lot of them were before me. I'm standing in their shoulders and I am who I am because of them. They helped me a lot. They gave me a home. They gave me a discipline, a career. When I was bullied in school because I am gay, they were my friends, they were my family, they were my professors, my mom, my mentors. Women had been surrounded my life. <laughs> so that is what I'm trying to do with my nursing career, to give it back to them. Thank you for listening to A Nurse First from Sigma. If you loved this episode, do us a favor and subscribe, rate, and leave us a review. It is very much appreciated. For more information about A Nurse First and Sigma, visit sigmanursing.org. Until next time. <laughs>